Everybody, it's Tyler here at PNW Sundrome, checking in with team number 5468, Chaos Theory. Uh, this robot here, really cool. Uh, again, awesome turret. You're going to see down here. We'll talk more about that coming up in just a little bit. But this entire structure, how it came together, uh, some of the programming functionality that's gone into it. There's some really neat custom work, to including some cool 3D printing. Let's talk about the scene coming up here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotic students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Hey, Tilson, let's talk about this uh, amazing turret that you have on your robot here. Uh, I'd love to just hear how you came up with the turret design. There's some really cool features about it, too. So walk me through some of it and how it's working out for your team. Absolutely. This turret is meant to compensate for our lack of a swerve. We wanted our arm to have as many degrees of freedom as possible. So with our West Coast drivetrain, we wanted to still be able to get the functionality of driving into the side, allowing us to pick up a cone or a cube and then be able to bring it to any position, even when it's scored in a lower position. We originally had intended to use a very large, uh, two very large gears and then drive it that way. That we found wasn't really possible due to the manufacturing time of those gears. So we had to switch to this design. Originally we had contemplated using a sprocket. However, with our previous experience in 2020 with a sprocket turret, we decided against this and we ended up using this belt. We had a lot of failed prints or different attempted prints for this belt ring, uh, this uh, pulley for the belt. It was, a bit of a nightmare to make, if I'm being honest, because they do not sell them in this size. So we had to design it and print it ourselves. That probably went through five different prints. We also have a really high capacity bearing underneath that turret that can support about a thousand pounds. That does have a little bit of wobble in it, but that is mostly compensated for by the general uh, center of gravity of this arm. And then we're driving it with this Neo with a Max Planetary Gearbox, which we're just starting to use this year. And so far, we have had zero problems with. So overall, I'm really happy with how it turned out. Despite the amount of work it took, uh, I couldn't be happier. Talk to me about, you got a lot of weight you know, on your arm going into where that turret base is there. Have you had to compensate for stability or anything like that on it? The big thing we have to compensate for is this big chunk you see taken out of the middle. Originally, it was going to be solid, and then we would have had uh, the turret clamping through it. However, with the high amount of weight, that would eventually crush the print. So we in, we designed some metal ch metal spacers that fit in here that prevent the force from going through the plastic print and instead into the metal, making the longevity of it far better. Kevin, let's talk about, I noticed on your bot, uh, you got a big lead screw uh, for your arm on there and also some really cool 3D printing as well. Talk to me about how that's working out for your team and a little more into the design for it. All right. So the lead screws were one of the more uh, complicated things to incorporate. We needed to design for the axial and radial force and reducing that uh, from going into the, uh, the gearbox. So there is a bearing block there to eliminate all the force from going into the gearbox and uh, protect it from being damaged. The Acme nuts uh, on the arm that connect to make the arm rotate were also one of the more complicated things to design. However, we got a design that uh, between strength and ease of design and manufacturing was a good um, middle ground. Then holding these on, we actually decided on having shoulder bolts with bushings that were really simple to install, really easy to repair and replace, and seemed to be working really well. Then for 3D printing, this year we, we did quite a lot more, having a lot of the arm braces made of 3D prints, mainly made of 3D printed PETG. Some of them are actually designed such that the plastic bends to hold the carbon fiber brace in the middle of the arm. Then uh, one of the hard stops is actually carbon fiber PETG, which is infused, uh, which is PETG infused with uh, chopped carbon fiber to make it quite a bit stiffer and function a lot better for a lot of the more higher load uh, applications, such as the quick swap motor mount we have here and on the turret. The Turret gears also, as Tielsen mentioned, 3D printed, which hasn't broken or had any issues at all once we've gotten it fitted after the few uh, modifications that it took. As we continue on the sound, there's a lot of presets that go uh, into uh, your arm working. So I'd love to hear a little bit more about the arm presets. Uh, Eric can tell me a little bit more about that. Uh, and then uh, I'd also love to hear about how did you get the uh, 
the speed of the lead screw to be kind of where you want to? Because lead screws are, are you know, we see them tend to be a little bit slower. How did you get it to go as fast as it did for your team? Yeah, so um, this is a really complex mechanism. There's a lot of moving joints here. So the easiest way we found to um, really have this work effectively is to have different presets and then basically just have the motors go to different positions. So we have a handful of different presets we can go to. And, um, and as you said, lead screws can be slow, but luckily we could compensate with it pretty easily. And uh, we actually have pretty low gear. Um, the gear reductions on these gearboxes are pretty fast, which allow the lead screws to move, you know, pretty fast and it makes that a lot easier. Um, another big issue though is since um, this is kind of like a big triangle here, um, the angle change that this arm makes depending on how much a lead screw moves is actually different as a lead screw progresses. And so we had to do some like trigonometry um, to find some good angles and it was definitely a lot of work. Um, but yeah, it works out pretty nicely. When you were looking at uh, other uh, potential features, was lead screw always the way for your team to go, or did you try out some other uh, uh, different ways to, uh, for your arm or the elevator aspect of it? Yeah, I think from the pretty start, we were pretty set on using lead screws. Um, we had some other designs, but for this arm, I think we were always planning on using lead screws just because of their like easy use. Um, last year, we used lead screws in our climbing mechanism, and so we were um, comfortable with using them this year again, and it seemed to work out pretty well. Arthur, as we start to wrap up on the robot here, talking about uh, some of the cool electrical features in your robot, uh, I know uh, we talked a little bit about your belly pan earlier as well too, but I'd love to just have a general overview of what's going on with your bot. Yeah, so last year we had a lot of electrical issues on our first competition, so we focused on reliability as one of our main things, from major changes such as flipping the belly pan upside down, to minor components like these starboards, which are slightly a bit hard to see, but they allow us to connect our motors without risking, like, if one of them comes out, the whole daisy chain circuit still stays connected. Furthermore, handy little pieces like these retention clips help make sure that our power poles stay connected. It's a lot of minor improvements, but we've managed to find ways to make a robot much more reliable. Well, Chaos Theory, thank you so much for taking time to tell us more about your robot. Wish you best of luck here at this competition, and uh, thanks a lot for showcasing what Chaos Theory has to offer. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash first updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.